Hello everyone, Gary here. We have another Quick Tips and Houdini tutorial. I'm hoping to make this an ongoing series, so please subscribe to my YouTube channel for uh, future Houdini tutorials, as well as Unreal Engine. And yeah, I'm almost at a thousand subscribers right now, so hopefully uh, we could get that number up to an even 1,000 or more. But anyway, we are going to do a quick tutorial on making circles and boolean shapes uh, with cylinders because that is a tricky topic no matter uh, what software you use the stereotypical ugly ugly cylinder on cylinder boolean and guns everywhere and oh yeah look at how beautiful those normals are i'm being sarcastic they're ugly we want to cut a hole or circular shape within this cylinder how do we get that with clean topology and most of us are aware of the make circle functionality. I have up the poly count on the cylinder so I can actually make a circle out of the geometry. You just highlight your primitives or edges or points or what have you. Hit T and then shift C for make circle. And yeah, you could do this as a start, but here's the main problem with the make circle functionality. It's no longer a cylinder. Look at that. Yeah. Ugly still, but so what would you want to do if you wanted to keep the cylindrical shape without this indent here, but still have a nice perfect hole here? Okay, so a quick and easy way to get our cylinder shape is as simple as using a ray node and you can just use minimum distance as a quick and easy fix. So you hook up your indented make circle geometry to the first input of the ray trace node and you put in your original cylinder mesh in the second input and it'll try to find the minimum distance in between and morph your make circle geometry to the original cylinder and get your mesh shape back into a cylinder using the minimum distance option. We'll go over other options later. Um, but let, let's say you didn't like the topology or let's say you didn't like the shape of the circle. You wanted to adjust the circle without having uh, being limited by the ray traces uh, limitations because it's just trying to find the shortest distance from point A to point B. Um, what you can do is you go into your make circle geometry and you delete the circle shape. Blast. And when you hit blast, you're hitting delete non-selected, so uh, you're isolating the circle shape of the mesh. All right, and once you have isolated your circle patch with the blast node, once again, uh, delete non-selected, uh, you'll see a problem that it does not align with the original geometry, obviously. So again, we will use a ray node, uh, but before we put the ray node, we are going to transform this. Okay, and what we will do is we will add a transform node and we will move the circle patch out so it does not intersect with the original mesh. So we'll grab our transform node and move it out along the X axis in this case. And this way there is room for the ray trace to work. So there's no weird intersections. And so this way we'll get a clean ray trace. Uh, we could do minimum distance, but uh, I'm going to show you the project rays option because it does work a little bit better. Nothing wrong with uh, minimum distance, but in this case, uh, it'll give us a tiny bit more control, which I'll show you a before and after. Uh, but anyway, so we have moved this out and in the translate tab, we are going to right click translate and copy parameter and put our ray trace node down. And once again, we need to cast it to the original geometry mesh. mesh. So we need to uh, hook that into our second input in the ray node coming from the original tube. Highlight that and project rays. You have the option of normal vector attribute. We'll try vector. Control left click this and to clean it out and paste relative references. What this is doing is it is uh, getting the our transform node and copying it. But the thing is we need to invert it because uh, right now the rays are moving this way. We need it to move back. So let's negate negative TX. And there you go. You ideally should negate the others, but we only moved it along the X axis. So I'm only gonna negate that for now. And you can see right there, it is transformed into a circle shape and conforms to the mesh. The beauty of having a transform node, if you do not like the circle shape, uh, because the uh, sometimes when you uh, ray cast a cylinder on cylinder, uh, just the way because the cylinder uh, curves inwards, uh, you can produce an oblong or off circle shape. 
so this way with the transform node, you can alter your shape to what you like. You can make it bigger, smaller, wider, taller. And we are not limited by the minimum distance option in the ray trace is node because that, that is just trying to find the shortest path from point A to point B. And so if we go in and just show you minimum distance as a before and after, you can see uh, what the issue with minimum distance can be. Uh, right now it is uh, being overly distorted because we transformed it. Usually minimum distance, you wanna keep it as is. But right now, even though that's serviceable, I, it is kind of oblong, once again, because it is a little bit less wide than it should be. Uh, so yeah, circle shapes can get a tiny bit distorted with minimum distance. Uh, so that's why we did the project rays. And if you do not like the shape of the circle, once again, we have our transform node. You can make it wider, you can make it more narrow where you can just uh, increase and decrease the size at will. All right, and so this is a good way to uh, have your circle and be able to adjust it. So moving on, let's cover how to get this all packed up together and reassembled. But we have to go over uh, an issue in regards to the point numbers, the at PT num values from the original geometry to the blasted node, which isolates a circle patch. We need to reassemble this, and uh, obviously there is a at PT num conflict. Right, we highlight this button right here to see our point numbers. You can see, all right, so you can see like points 80, 81, 82, and then when we isolate it. So our point ID numbers are all messed up now, as uh, most of you will know uh, just by modeling Houdini, but a very quick and easy uh, fix. Uh, you may not know if you're a beginner or new to Houdini is you just, uh, before you isolate anything, you go to your attribute wrangle before you before the blast node. And this is always a good idea whenever you're deleting and reassembling geometry. Uh, you will make a integer value i at id equals at pt num. And this way, no matter how many times you delete or erase geometry, even though the point numbers, the PT num value will change, uh, the ID attribute that is stored, you can see right there when I middle mouse click on the isolated circular patch button, the ID will re retain the PT num value so we can reassemble our points properly. So if we go into our geometry spreadsheet, you'll see the ID numbers have the retain the original point number right here. All right, and now how do we reassemble this? Is we'll grab our original geometry, we will get a wrangle node. And we're gonna do some little bit of vex magic. Okay, so we have, in our input one, we have our, on the attribute wrangle node right here. We have our original tube going into input one, which is actually input number zero, if you wanna be mathematically correct in programming language. And in our second input, which is input one, we have our ray traced circular patch. And both of these have ID values that corroborate. So what we'll do, create a value called int pair point. And this pair point will find the corresponding point from the original geometry to the morphed ray trace geometry. So what we will do is int pair point and we will have equal signed, and we will use a fairly useful vex term called find attribute value. And what this does, this will find a value in a separate piece of geometry, and whenever it matches, it will return that point number. And you can see where we're going with this. We were going to find in the second input, wherever the ID matches a point in the first input, that'll tell us where the corresponding points go to, and so we can grab the new point number that was reassigned when we deleted and isolated the circular patch. And that way we will know what points align to which points on input two, as opposed to the original geometry. So find attribute value, you type in the number one because we are looking in the second input, which is one, the first input being zero. So you wanna look into the second input, which is number one. Okay, so after you put in what input you want to use, you type in point because it needs to know which uh, class it is, if it's a point, primitive, or edge it's looking for, vertex. Then you type in the ID because that is the name, the string name of the attribute you're looking for. And then what you wanna do is type in at ptnum 
And what that's going to do, the at PT num is going to find the ID value of the first input, which is our original geometry. And it's going to find the point that matches the ID value from the first input to the second input. And that will return the new pair point number. So yeah, so pretty much find attribute value, look into the second input, which is number one. It's a point class. You're looking for the ID value where it, which matches the current point being processed and it will look at the current point in input zero, the first input which is our original geometry. It'll look for the ID value in that and then find the matching value in our second geometry, our isolated patch and it will return its new point number so now we know which point correlates to which one in the opposing inputs. Now what do we do with this information? Okay, so not all of the points in our original geometry uh, will get a pair point because we deleted most of them as you have seen. So most of the points in the second input are missing. So it will only return a value for points that are the same that we kept. So if uh, in layman's terms, if we go into our geometry spreadsheet and I uh, put I changed this to i at pair point, uh, so that way it is a, a global variable so we can look at it in the geometry spreadsheet so it's not local. Right here you can see our pair point attribute in our points in the first input that we just assigned. And you'll see right here, for instance, point number 155 in the original geometry has been reassigned to the point number 29 when we deleted and isolated the circular patch. You'll see 154, that its new point number is 28. And right down here below, and this is how we're going to isolate the changed points to the static points. Negative one just means error. That means there's no matching point because this, these are the, the deleted points. So whenever you see a negative one, that means it couldn't find anything. That is an error code. So um, this, is, this will never be zero because that would be, because zero is technically a valid point number. Um, so you can't put zero or blank. It can't be blank either. So negative one, if you didn't know, that is a universal error code. All right, and so what we're going to do is we're going to move the points in the original geometry to match the isolated points position. All right, so we can isolate the points that change to a circle shape using the negative one value to isolate the points that only need to move. So if parentheses at pair point is greater than or equal to zero, and this way, the negative one error points that do not have a corresponding point value will be ignored because they don't need to move. Bracket, bracket, type in at P, and that is grabbing the point position of the first input, and we're gonna change it to the corresponding point in the second input. So you'll put at P equals point, type in the number one because we're looking in the second input and we are grabbing the posi new position in the isolated circular patch geometry. Type in P parentheses for a position, and then for the point number, we are going to type in at pair point because that is the new point number for the isolated geometry that was reassigned. Semicolon, and then when I hit enter, you should see our new shape taken form, and we now have a nice cylindrical shape without indentations. And more importantly, we can control the shape if we do not like it. So, for instance, we go in our, to our transform node, widen it up a bit, narrow it up a bit, and we can change the shape at will. And that is a quick way to direct model circular shapes uh, in Houdini. And if we'll notice, we have all quads right here. We have no funny geometry. And more importantly, we have no indents to speak of and no funky normals. Okay, the normals aren't too funky, but you'll see that it is conforming to the edge loop right here. You could always just add another normal node and straighten them back out. All right, and so now that we have our new geometry that has no indents, you could probably just pull this at will now. So extrude, and you can see that's a lot more cleaner than a Boolean that we saw before. Uh, and if you don't like the the extrusion going in and out according to the edge normal if you want. You could always click on transform extruded front if you wanted to extrude this. And that'll move it out into a more orthographic perspective. So right there if you wanted to make like a little sink handle and the transform extruded front in the poly extrude node that is in local space. So you'll see that if you wanted to make this uh, flat, you just hit the E key and then 
flatten the z-axis to zero and right there you can have like a little sink nozzle or whatever and you have a much more cleaner way to make uh, circular shapes uh, being bold in and out of cylinders now. All right, so that was a Houdini quick tip on how to put circular shapes or bowls or what have you onto a, another cylinder without having a god-awful topology. So hopefully you found this uh, tutorial helpful, but let's say you think this is a serviceable technique but a little bit cumbersome. Uh, it's not quite there yet. It would be nice to have, uh, while this topology isn't bad, it could be a little bit better. What if we had another edge loop here that we can adjust to avoid this stretching? Because this is a stretching a little bit too far for me. It's not terrible, but for basic shapes it suffices. But some people may want a little bit more robust topology that's a little bit smoothable, that transitions more into a circular shape. That is a topic for my next tutorial series, which will be available very soon on Gumroad. So once again, just visit gumroad.com slash cinema and keep an eye out or subscribe to my YouTube channel. And that HDA tutorial series that's coming up next, uh, that HDA will be similar to this, but on steroids. So you will not have to uh, manually select your primitives, hit T, hit shift C, which is not really procedural again. Uh, you will not have to worry about setting up a graph. It's an HDA and you can just pretty much grab a bounding box, drag it across your mesh and have a circle appear that is uh, that retains quad topology and has adjustable radius sizes, uh, delete or keep the circular patch, as well as the ability to smooth a transitional edge loop around your circle. So that is coming up next, so keep an eye out on YouTube or on my Gumroad page, so please subscribe. All right, and thanks again. And once again, the files for this particular project are available on my Gumroad page if you want to download that to follow along. All right, and thanks again.